The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Tuesday morning, 60 minutes to go until the opening bell. And we got markets starting off right where we left off yesterday, positive territory. S&P is up almost 3% right now, trading up 75 points at 27.19. We had been 25 points even above where we're trading at right now. You see the chart I have up here? This is a 30-minute. You go from Sunday evening Pretty remarkable where we end last week. You back it up to April 3rd, coming into the close at about 2480 in the S&Ps. We're now trading above 2700. You're talking about 240 S&P points, pretty much to the dot where we were right now. And you actually made it about 265 S&P points. That's almost 10% from where we ended last week weeks trading remarkable moves all over the place jumping over to the nasdaq the nasdaq up 220 points 2.75 percent trading at 82.50 had been above 8300 nasdaq you back this up there is your Friday action. Here's your Sunday open. We ended at about 7,500. We just reached 8,300. That's a solid 800 points, more than a 10% pop from where we were trading at Friday afternoon in the NASDAQ 100. Dow 30, 23,452. The high this morning. Again, we'll put this on a chart to see where we were Sunday night. We end last week, excuse me, at just about 21,000. And remarkable. 2,400 points, essentially. We are up about 16 to 1,700 points yesterday. Today, we're adding about six to 700 points on top of that, almost 800 points at the high there. 23,452 from 21,000. You back things up on the Dow. We're, we have a 23 handle. We, we were almost going to get a 17,000 handle within a few points just on March 23rd that we were looking to break 18,000 already. We're more than 5,000 points above that level just for some context here from that recent high what kind of a bounce we're talking about now the market's climbing towards a 50 percent retracement of that move lower jumping over to the s p's to see where that lines up the high of 33.97 that high in the s p's february 20th you reach a low of 2174 we're approaching 600 s p points basically 550 on the dot as we speak but to see where this retracement level from that move lower you're talking about almost 1,300 points lower. The 50% coming up to 2794, just surpassing basically the high of yesterday. It's an important level. You know, we made that high on March 27th. You pulled back, you finished right basically at that level, actually above that level on the S&Ps, and today charging higher. Oil contract jumping into some commodities. That's on your daily. Let's put it on a 15 minute. 15 minute. You end last week at 29, volatility all over the place in the price of crude. We actually made it up early, early yesterday morning. It's almost 28 bucks. You have crude trading at 26.46. And how about gold above 1,700 yesterday? Check out that run, folks, right? 7.15 last night, 17.42. Folks, you're talking about $100 in the price of gold from about midnight till 7 p.m. Eastern time. Gold then pulls back under 1,700. Uh, back above that level now, up $16 technically on the session. That's about 1%. 1710 for a little context, putting that on a year daily. I mean, check out that valley and peak all in one from March 9th. We trade from almost 1700 down to the low of March 16th of 1450, right on the dot, 1450.90. And just like that, folks, we're up almost $300 in the price of gold, 1710. Some of those equities in the gold report really rocking and rolling. If you're interested, sign up for the gold report, my dad's weekly newsletter. Check that out. Gold with some volatility recently for sure. Jump it over to silver since we're on it. Silver, not quite back up to that high of February 24th. Silver's at 1975 in September. Whoops, silver was, oh boy, get back to the charts. Silver was at 1851, February 24th. You make a low of 1164, and now we're trading at 1572. For some context there in terms of the retracement, 
bumping right up to a 618 at 1617 on silver. And gold, a little bit of a different scenario because we're actually above that level, right? When you compare those two charts, quite a difference. Checking out notes and bonds. We're getting some lower price and higher yield, the 10-year. Now, this is a daily. You see the high we made, 140.20. We're right now trading at 137.30, putting it on a shorter time frame for the action. There you see the fall off towards the overnight. Yields trading lower in price, higher in yield. And let's jump over to the VIX because quite the volatility. Uh, I'm surprised you haven't seen that even a little bit lower, right? You come from Sunday into Monday trading. Monday, the market charges higher. The market continues higher, but it looks like the VIX saying we're okay with a 44.58 VIX for the time being, regardless of how much this market goes up right now. Jumping over to Bitcoin, 73.75, a little bit of a pullback just in the last 15 minutes or so. We were flirting at about 7,500. There's your action last night, making high of 75.15. Bitcoin on the longer time frame, we were up there before the collapse in the markets began at about 10,600. That kind of retracement, we're talking about 81.93 would be the 618 retracement on that stock. Jumping over to headlines we have, and where are we? There we are, I wanted the map. The total numbers, 1.36 million. I'm gonna refresh this, because unfortunately these numbers are moving so quick that they are updating constantly. In the US, 368,000 cases, total debts approaching 11,000. New York City, the hardest hit of them all, 3,485 debts. Sad, remarkable numbers. And hopefully the talk being as in the euphoria in the market yesterday and today, maybe seeing some numbers of getting things under control, at least over the next month, New York peaking, peaks coming in other areas as well. Social distancing showing signs of potentially working in Europe, maybe Italy coming out of the hardest hit of their region. Um, as in flattening of the curve. Italy, just staggering numbers, um, 132 cases, but 16,500 deaths. Now, of course, the cases may be being higher, not being reported there, some of the more mild versions of the case, but to even have a death total exceeding 10% on the people that are being counted, and you're up to 132,000 cases. Spain may be flattening their curve as well, but right up near 10,000, uh, excuse me, right up near 10% mortality. Thankfully, the US, you know, we're near a 10% mortality right now, but still 11,000. That's a sad story on each one. Jumping over to some individual equity news. Macy's been struggling tremendously recently. Their CFO, Paula Price, going to depart in May. So the CFO going to leave the company May 31st. External search is underway for Price's replacement. Macy's struggling dramatically before the COVID-19 crisis. And since then, that only actually like accelerating things. But Macy's, if you check it out, quite a pop. We just went from 438 to 632. You're talking about a $2 pop. That's almost 40%. The stock just went up from where we were flirting with the end of last week, Thursday and Friday. Doesn't mean we might not be right back down there. A little bit of a shorter time frame. You see the collapse from basically 17 or 18 bucks before this started. You're still gonna open at about $6, flirting with that lower range in Macy's. We'll finish up this first segment with some of the FANG stocks, Amazon. Looking to open, that's a daily above $2,000. They're trading at about 2018 right now. Microsoft shares opening above 170. Apple shares 270, we'll call it. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back from the break. See what else we have on tap for Tuesday trading. Markets in positive territory. S&P's up 82 points right now. Dow up 788. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000, the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P is positive by 85. Dow positive by 822 right now. We got about 45 minutes to go until the opening bell. I'm going to jump over a couple stories. I'm going to start once off with a time story. Pretty cool story here in terms of the virus change, the way we internet. Uh, some cool charts in terms of what you would imagine. What it, one of the trends that they talk about here, New York Times analysis of internet usage in the U.S. from SimilarWeb and Apptopia, two online data provider, providers, reveals that our behavior shifted, not surprising, sometimes starkly as the virus spread and pushed us to our devices for work, play, or connecting. Uh, it's not often you would have the ability. This could... This would normally be a gradual transition, but it's amazing what the human mind, the human body, uh, all of us together can do when you put your minds to it, as in having to make a shift. From Friday, you were going to work. Come Monday, you have to do everything you did in your office best you can from home or in school, et cetera. So started off websites. Facebook, 27%. Now, here's what's interesting. This is websites, okay? Facebook, that's going to the actual site, facebook.com, okay? 27% increase, Netflix 16, YouTube 13. Just talking about pulling up the apps, though, Facebook, barely positive. Netflix, we'll call that unchanged. And people going to YouTube on the apps, actually down 4 to 5%. Uh, the desktop computer, the laptop computer resurging in the day that everybody's at home. You don't need to gather uh, all your information off of your phone. If you're traveling, you actually are by a computer, something to keep in mind. With the rise of social distancing, we're seeking out new ways to connect, mostly through video chat. Google Duo, 12.4. Nextdoor, not familiar with them, nextdoor.com, up 73%. House Party, up 79%. We've all seen the acceleration of Zoom. Tom and I talked about it on the show yesterday. Make sure it's Zoom, symbol Z-M, not symbol Z-O-O-M, uh, but quite a charge higher. Now Zoom pulling back. You can use their app for free for 40 minutes, I think, or in some capacity, you can use it for free. You have to transition to a paid. Not sure the acceleration is going to be warranted. Uh, the price acceleration in that stock is warranted by the amount of subscribers that they're going to be able to transition to a paying model on Zoom. But more reliant on services to allow us to work from home and learn from home. Not surprising at all, right? Daily app sessions for popular remote work apps. There's your Zoom acceleration. Zoom in the orange from under 2 million about to over 6 million. 
Google Classroom accelerating as well. And then you have Microsoft Teams, Hangout Meets by Google. Google's got two up there, right? Quite quite a, an achievement to have two different competing uh, arenas, as in Hangouts or the Classroom, which is probably more tailored to exactly what's happening for uh, at least students. VPN, Super Unlimited Proxy. Not familiar with that, but you see the acceleration here. The research... Uh, the search for updates on the virus has pushed readership for local and established newspapers, but not partisan sites. That is good to hear, no matter what you believe. Partisan is not the way to go. Uh, talking about media and what is being consumed. Um, and then some more charts in terms of average daily traffic. Uh, Wikipedia over that time, CDC. .gov, good for people getting their information. And video games, it wouldn't surprise, right? Twitch up 20%, TikTok up 15, ESPN down 40%. ESPN, of course, owned by Disney. They've had some problems recently. Really cool stuff there. If you get a chance, if you have access to the Times, check out that article today. Uh, and let's just jump over even the likes of Zoom as we talked about, Z-O-O-M. Uh, listen to me, it's Z-M, not Z-O-O-M. As I say, it's Z-M for Zoom. Uh, here we are, pulling it up on the daily. So you see the rise, you see the pullback. Yesterday, pretty remarkable, the charge higher it had. Market's up by 7%, so of course that buoying it, buoying it. But uh, Zoom got a downgrade. I mean, they were as low as 108, finished the day at 122. You're gonna open basically flat today for Zoom. Some of the other companies mentioned in there, you had Microsoft Teams. Microsoft's recent high is 190. You're gonna be opening back at about 170 right now. Alphabet, Google, you're going to open at about 1220. You're sitting at 1186 yesterday, the low of just above 1000. You pull back almost 33% from 1500 on that one. Amazon not really mentioned, but let's see up yet. Yeah, 2022 and uh what else was mentioned in terms of streaming? Uh Disney, of course, I want to get to. Netflix coming right up to their high. They're going to open at about 382 to 383 today. Closed at 380. We're talking about a high of 393. Disney, nowhere close to it. You saw it. ESPN down about 40%. Disney World, Disneyland closed. Uh, all of that closed in terms of movie production, movie theaters that they'll be showing it in. But the one thing that is open is Disney Plus, and I guarantee that they are getting an acceleration of signups. Uh, Disney looking to open at about 104. So back towards this high we had recently, that high for Disney, looking like a high 107.73 on March 26th. So you'll be about three or four dollars away from that for Disney. And jumping around to some of the other stocks I like to check out in terms of some volatility action, Uber shares. Let's put it, they're gonna open at about 27.60. So you're climbing up into this recent high we had as well in Uber. Uber as low as 13.71, till that CEO came out and said that they are positioned to have between about four to six billion dollars in capital, plus a $2 billion revolving credit throughout this year, regardless of how bad things get from a 60 to 80% slowdown. That's where they see themselves. Lyft shares as well, 25.73. Lyft's gonna open at about $27. Um, and let's jump around to some of the cannabis stocks. Canopy Growth, gonna open just under 15. I mean, these stocks, if you believe at all in some of these stocks surviving, Canopy, the largest of them all right now. I mean, we're back to when this run literally accelerated in November of 17. Talking about two and a half years, we've run to $59. Canopy back down to a low recently of $9. We're gonna open at about 15. Uh, Kronos. That's a tough one, 577 from 25. And uh, how about Constellation, which has a huge investment in Canopy themselves and the maker of the Corona beer, which is getting a lot of press, unfortunate for them or fortunate. But on a weekly, you're down from about 210, we'll call it, to 104, basically cut in half. And you're now up to about 150 is where you're gonna open, 148 by 149.50 right now. Checking back to the markets, S&Ps, as we tick around, I'm gonna put this in a shorter time frame, let's delete that drawn and see the action so far this morning. The high reached 6.15 a.m., 27.45. Even when I came on the air, these are 15-minute bars, 8.30. I mean, you're still getting some volatility. We just had a 15-point bar in the S&P from 27. 15, yes, up to 27.30. That was a solid 30 points that we were off the high. That's a solid 1% there. So this uh, volatility not ceasing to exist for sure. Other news out there, 
you, you could have seen this one coming. Uh, we work suing SoftBank over the withdrawal of a $3 billion tender offer. So reported last week that we work pulling out of the deal for a $3 billion tender offer to purchase shares. A lot of those shares coming from the CEO and founder, Adam Newman. So that deal not going through. We work not willing to invest that $3 billion, pulling out late in the process of it, withdrawing that tender offer. So that was Tuesday. Uh, no, that is that they're announcing that. WeWork is claiming that SoftBank breached the obligation. We'll see how that plays out. But nonetheless, uh, all but expected, the legal battle is on. And some of the other headlines jumping through in terms of stocks making headlines this morning. Exxon cutting to the 2020 capital expenditures by 30% and cash operating expenses expenditures by 15, designed to put it in the strongest possible position with energy markets improve. I mean, Exxon Mobil, folks, this is another one. You know, if you think Exxon's going to be around and oil's going to be around long term with dividends in place, potentially from 70 down to 30, going to open at about 42 today. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the program. I'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of DFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. Markets right where we started the program. Dow up 830, S&P's up 84. Jumping around to some of the equities making headlines as well this morning. AT&T issued a financial update to incorporate the impact of the coronavirus outbreak, saying it had a strong cash position and balance sheet, as well as attractive liquidity levels. It also announced plans to continue paying quarterly dividends to shareholders. The market liking that news from AT&T. Those shares from 29.44 to about 30.75. We were just trading at 27.25 at the close of Friday. Verizon checking in on them, trading higher as well. We're up at about almost $58 in Verizon. Man, the, the volatility, some of these stocks even from 62 to 48 to 56. Um, stable companies with dividends out there, but everything getting hit in this market as you march on. In terms of headlines out there, pretty dramatic, right? The UK, um, Boris Johnson, Prime Minister of the UK, in intensive care. Hopefully he is doing well, but a stark headline on the realities of this ripping across the globe. And to put things in context for the curves, days after 100th case, the US, hopefully to see some flattening, but you see some of these curves here. Um, Italy, Spain, hopefully through the worst of it as we flatten and come down from there. The U.S. will see uh, how we play that out. Yields, the 10-year above 0.7% on hopes the coronavirus spread is slowing. There are your yields. There's the 10-year, 0.75. The 30-year, 1.35. You're looking at a five-year of about 0.49 as yields a little bit higher uh, on the market, accelerating higher as well. Finishing it up, Let's check in on some of the indices to wrap it up. We saw the S&P 83, putting this on a shorter time frame. The market, I mean, we just kind of been hanging at this level, you could say, since about 4.15 in the morning. We were up to a high of 27.21. We're within about six points of that level. Did peak at about 27.45, but just sitting in this level, 27.28 in the S&Ps as we wait for that market open. And folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN. You got a few minutes as we get ready for Larry Pesavento at 9.06 a.m. His program begins 10 minutes from right now. And check out Basil Chapman, a two-day webinar a week from tomorrow. You instantly get his emailed booklet, access to the opening call, and a full day of education from 9 till 4.30. Check it out and sign up on the front page at TFNN.com. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesavento coming up right now.